cellular regeneration that helps. I've been intermittent faster for the last nine years. It's helped me in a lot of other ways in my life. Yeah. But, you know, does it assist the eyes at all? There is some evidence that there's benefits to it. Uh, it's usually not direct evidence. Uh, so I did a video on this. Uh, so, I, so I actually researched a little bit because one of my best Let's friends. God damn. Imagine what's going to happen now as we are combining the power of artificial intelligence to do these studies <laughs> and things. I mean, I, you're imagining a lot more than me. You're in the space. You're yeah. you're in medicine. But, you know, I don't like to get ahead of myself and get overexcited about like, oh, my God, we're going to solve every problem ever. But like, it's hard not to be excited what we're going to see in the next 10 to 15 years, whether we're talking about this or cancer, or you, you name it, where you guys are basically going to be able to attach like a fucking nitro turbocharger to any type of research you do and almost like, you know, not to use the term, but let's use the term like biohack the bodies, you, you know, all of our bodies to be able to right. work for ourselves rather than working against it like we've done for so long. Right. I hope that that's how it ends up getting used. Again, there's a lot of garbage out there. Um, mm -hmm. You can find research studies to support anything you want. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so there is, there's going to be this growth period where we got to figure out what's one, how the AI is working. Can it be trusted? It has to always have some form of human review verification. Uh, I, but they are using like AI robots now to do cataract surgery. Mm -hmm. They're using it uh, certainly to, uh, I, I personally don't use it too much in regular patient care. But I know doctors who are using it at least to document their charts. Uh, because you walk in, Doc, I, my eyes are fucked. All right, hold on, chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's usually not chat like that. Uh, I know but, you're not. I'm just messing with you. Right, but like they'd be recording everything we say during an exam. Rather than depending on me typing everything in, it's just listening to everything we say and it's documenting word for word yeah. and then organizing it so that it makes it easier for me legally it's charting everything that's being said or done uh and and it's like it's gonna make us more efficient mm. and then from the evaluation standpoint the eye care specifically is already ad way more advanced than a lot of other professions because we image so many things like we take photos of the back of your eye so there's already decades of photos of forms oh, yeah. of diabetes uh, or forms of glaucoma that have already been annotated by doctors that they can just feed into these AI systems. And the AI is now getting better at detecting bleeding in the back of the eye and knowing what the next protocol is than humans are. So it's going to get to that point where we're almost going to, I hate to put ourselves out of a job in a way, because now we'll just have this machine do tell you exactly, hey, this is what's likely going on. Uh, here's probably the next best steps. Hey guys, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It's a huge, huge help. Thank you. Uh, and, you know, but there's always the question of legality. Like what happens if it's wrong? Who's at fault? Right. I think there's also, and again, we don't know this world until we're in it, but there's from a from the perspective of just like a human going for help, there's going to be a huge aspect of someone who can take all the power of AI and the data and actually be an expert in understanding, putting that all together to make a personalized call for the patient sitting in front of them. I think stuff like, you know, we always talk about these jobs like cooks and gardeners and stuff that are going to be like the last to go because of the way the motion works to be able to actually do these things. But I think jobs like doctors as well, like there's always going to be a need for something like that. Yeah. It'll, it'll develop, it'll evolve side by side in a way, I think. Yeah. I think, uh, especially from the legal standpoint, it's going to have to have some oversight, but, um, we're going to, doctors are going to end up being kind of like software engineers in a way. We're just mm. going to be sitting behind a computer and evaluating and then being the communicator. Cause that's where for as awesome as technology is going, the value, I think I forgot who said it. Um, but as the world becomes more dominated by AI, the value of human connection is going to become even more important. Agreed. And I think that's even why podcasts are yeah. have grown to be so amazing is because we we value, we miss this communication and this human connection. Yeah. And so I think uh it's like yeah, you can get an eye you in 20 years from now you, you can get an eye exam done by this computer robot, but if you really want to be heard by a real human being, you want to have a conversation. Yes. You want you want that human touch. 
you're gonna you're gonna pay more for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it, it is gonna be a brave new world though. One one last question on diet, and then yeah. we're gonna go full blown into blue light. That's good. Is there any related to the eyes? Is there any data to suggest like intermittent fasting is something mm. with with cellular regeneration that helps? I've been intermittent faster for the last nine years. It's helped me in a lot of other ways in my life. Yeah, but, you know. Does it assist the eyes at all? There is some evidence that there's benefits to it. Uh, it's usually not direct evidence. Uh, so I did a video on this. Uh, so, I, so I actually researched a little bit because one of my best Let's friends, pull that <laughs> one of my best friends, he also in, in, fasting changed his life. He did. He's experimented with like you know ten day fasts, and he's experimented with you know just intermittent ten eating. days. He's done a lot. Uh, he went a little extreme into it. It, it helped him a lot, um, especially with weight loss and things like that. But uh, doing, you know, like 12, you know, he basically would eat one meal a day, mm -hmm. uh, or he'd go a few days fasting. Uh, so, so I was always interested cause he had such positive benefits. I tried a little bit myself and then I was like, okay, well, what, is there anything to this specifically for the eyes? It's always, and you're that same way. I can tell you kind of bring this genuine curiosity. I want to figure this out. So I apply that to a lot of my videos too. I'm like, well, what is going on? Uh, so the, a lot of the research is based on people fasting for like Ramadan. Okay. Um, but they do find some benefits that during fasting state, the eye pressure may go down just a little bit. It may not be clinically significant, but it may go down a little bit. It may be protective for glaucoma. Hmm. Uh, there are people who report improvements with their dry eye with it. Uh, nothing again, super clinically meaningful, but there are hypotheses that the autophagy, I'm sure you've heard that term mm -hmm. before, where the body, the bodies are always trying to clean up dead cells right. and make itself more efficient. Starts it, I, I think the optimal time where it like really starts kicking in, I want to say I'm not looking at it right now, would be like the 12 to 14 hour mark is when that really ramps up. Right, and there's different ways to do uh, intermittent fasting. And so there's like some people who know intermittent fast for 12 hours or you only eat during a uh, kind of a four or eight hour window during the day, there's different ways to do it, right? But the they do say that when you are doing fasting, your body does go into this autophagy state where mm -hmm. it's kind of heightened. And so there is kind of this idea that if you are intermittent fasting, this may help all these different parts of your body, but it may also help with regeneration or cleaning up cells within the back of the eye, which again, in the retina is one of those highly metabolic yeah. tissues. So it may have a protective effect. Uh, I also think for people just losing weight, we know that that- Oh, for sure, yeah. That's gonna help with a lot of other things, especially um, sensitivities to diabetes. Um, as, long as, as long as you're doing things in a healthy manner, you know, uh, like there, there's people who will do like crash diet kind of like fasting where sure. they're like, all right, I'll fast two days at a time and do this on repeat for like 60 days and they lose 50 pounds and then, you know, they get off it and they put it all back on. Like as long as you're doing it in like a healthy, natural way, like my way is simple. Like I just don't have breakfast. I haven't had that in years. I eat in about, you know, a six, seven hour window every day. Mm -hmm. Feel great. It's repeatable, yeah. easy on the weekends. If I want to go out and have a good fucking time, I do, you know, that's it. So I, I've been largely kind of in that same boat for a long time, except uh, a few years ago, I started weightlifting. <laughs> and if you're going to start to try to like bulk up, you need a ton of calories. And it was like, it was like a homework assignment. <laughs> so, mm. so I did start eating breakfast just so I could get those extra calories in. Uh, and then I got injured my shoulders and I had to kind of like, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> then I couldn't lift as much. So I had to drop back down, but it's something I, I want to try to get back into. The, you're looking uh, good. Thanks. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to hold, got the hold biceps on. going. The, uh, so yeah, intermittent fasting, there may be something to it. We don't have the most ridiculous studies to support it, but mm. I, I think if it's done safely, uh, if it's done to manage diet and, and somewhat weight control, uh, I say all power to you. Yeah. Um, there are certainly specialists and books out there who go way more into it. Um, but as far as protection for the eye, there's at least some evidence to support it. it may be protective against some diseases. Good to know. I got to look at that more Yeah. as well. That was another one of those things. Like I started doing it by accident, long story, like nine years ago. <laughs> and then a few, I didn't really look at all the benefits of it until like I was a few years in. 
And I was like, whoa, like this is this is actually like maybe how we're meant to be, you know, right. just eating on two meals a day. There is one other kind of interesting side note and in that this came from my friend. Again, he brought up to me, he's like, when I'm fasting and I'm hit like a day or two, he's like, my vision is better. My mm. eyesight is clear. And there's two components that I, I can hypothesize. Uh, one is that mental, like, so there's a mental clarity component where his attention, his focus is enhanced, and that might just be a subjective in feeling that his vision is more in focus. But then there's this other part where it could be a blood sugar change that is in fact helping his vision improve. Mm. Uh, and that's because as people's blood sugar is out of control, let's say somebody is pre-diabetic or is diabetic, as more glucose is in your bloodstream, the lens inside the eye can swell. And when it swells, the lens changes shape and the power of the eye changes. Mm. And so when people are severely diabetic and they come in, they have their eye exam, we're like, wow, your powers have shifted a lot. And then they get put on medication and then it drops down, the lens swelling goes away. And now, oh, now they don't need as strong glasses anymore. Wow. So, so they so there could be two things component to it. Um, but the mental clarity is always fascinating to me for yeah. how many people, it's not just him, I've, a lot of the people online claim that like when they're fasting, do you feel that? Or? Yeah, there's a weird window there. Like I, I did, I'm, I'm gonna try to do it once a year now where I do a 72 hour fast to like clear the system because there's some good science that, that the optimization of autophagy that happens when you do that and like ketosis is really good. I did one of those in June. And what was strange is I kept my workout schedule the same. I don't know if you should do that, but I was like 38 hours in. And I remember when I'd been at like 24, so I started it like a night and then, so 24 hours later, like at night, I felt like low energy, but then when I woke up that next morning at, you know, 30 some hours or something like yeah. that, I felt good and clear and I went in and did my like full deadlift day and I was moving. It was very, <laughs> very strange. So there were some weird energy bursts, but then I would say when I woke up the third day, I was like, we're pushing this. Like yeah. it's gonna be tough getting to 72 and it, and it was. Thank you guys for watching the episode. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button on the video. They're both a huge, huge help. And if you would like to follow me on Instagram and X, those links are in my description below.